What's going on guys, Seth here. If I were to ask you one simple question, what is your all time favorite scary movie? Or better yet, what film scared you the most as a kid? <sighs> Did this guy pop up in your mind? I think so. If you were like me, you were a kid of the 90s and Stephen King's It terrifies you. It originally came on television as a miniseries, so contrary to popular belief, it's not actually a movie. Not yet. The actual movie is coming out soon, and that's the whole point of this t-shirt. What I found interesting about it is, it has the old Pennywise on the shirt, but it's from the new movie. Stephen King's It, the movie. Now, even though this is a horror movie, or horror miniseries, this is one of the most important films from my childhood. You may ask why. Well, let's look at it. The story is focused on a group of kids. Not teenagers this time, but actual kids. The film starts out with Bill's younger brother, Georgie, pestering him for a boat and pestering to let him go sail it. Bill agrees reluctantly, but he informs Georgie that he has to go down to the basement to get some paraffin wax to seal the boat so it can float on top of the water. Georgie kind of gulps, but he agrees and walks down there and gets the paraffin. Now, if you're a kid, you can definitely identify with this, this part of the film. Basements were creepy as hell back then. Now, I never even had a basement as a kid. I had an attic. So Georgie sets out to sail his precious boat that his brother just made him. And along the way, he's singing and happy. Everyone's having a good time out there in, in the yards and everything. It's kind of raining a little bit until the unthinkable happens. Georgie's boat goes into a sewer drain. We've already watched the scene where the girl is killed in her backyard amongst all those sheets, which was creepy as hell. Especially when the mother sees what I guess is the remains of the little girl and her tricycle is upside down with the pedal spinning around. What is it about tricycles in horror movies that just scared the bejesus out of us? There's one in this movie, there's one in Night Round Elm Street. Well, one of the sequels anyway. So the tone's already been set in the film. It's set in a fictional town called Derry, Maine, where the air is really crisp looking. It's, you know, it's kind of uh, rainy-like, I guess. And you can see the television quality of the, mo of the miniseries because it's not movie quality cinematography. It's like made for TV which makes the series even creepier in my opinion. The soundtrack is perfect and it really sets the tone of the film. It matches the atmosphere of the town and what's going on in the scenes perfectly. So we get back to Georgie sailing his boat. When he reaches down into the drain to look for his boat, he is greeted by Pennywise the Dancing Clown. At first glance Pennywise doesn't seem that scary which I think is what makes him scary-er. Immediately, we recognized Tim Curry behind the makeup and the face paint. And of course, we, we know him from Home Alone 2 and other funny movies like the Rocky Horror Picture Show and etc. and so on. So he has a little conversation with Georgie and this is like a perfect example of what parents should teach their children not to do when meeting a stranger. Georgie says the correct thing. He says, I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. And Pennywise agrees. That's very wise of your dad to tell you that, Georgie. I am Pennywise the Dancing Clown, and you are Georgie. And now we're not strangers anymore. Now, being a grown-up, you would laugh at this kind of approach to someone trying to seduce you into a sewer. But a kid that young, they might actually fall for it. In all seriousness, four or five years old, maybe six, your precious boat washes down the sewer drain and you have a clown. At a young age, kids are taught to kind of trust clowns, at least they were back then. Clowns weren't scary at the time. So he offers Georgie a balloon. Georgie doesn't take it. He offers him his boat. Georgie reaches for the boat. And then we see Pennywise's 
well, his first true form. We see his braids with sharp teeth, his eyes change color, his hair gets kind of wilder. And you can imagine what's happening because he's grabbing Georgie by his arm and pulling him down into the sewer. Now, it kind of flashes to the funeral, and this is when we first see the entire team, or the Losers Club. You have Bill, who's played by Jonathan Brandis, and is also played by Richard Thomas in, in the second part of the series. Richard Thomas was most famous for playing John Boy in The Waltons. Now, you have several other famous people in this movie. You have John Ritter, Tim Curry, of course, I've already mentioned Richard Thomas. You have Annette O'Toole, who, crazily enough, played in Smallville and um, one of the Superman sequels. She's a great actress, at least she was at the time. You also have Tim Reed, who plays the librarian. Tim Reed kind of holds the whole film together. He's like the glue in this film. He holds the whole thing together. He brings everyone back to the town. So, at the funeral, like I said, we first meet the entire Losers Club. You have Seth Green playing uh, Richie Tozier. I don't know the guy's name that plays him in as he gets older. But my favorite part of the film is when they're kids, because this is what hit home to me when I was a child. Like I said, I saw this film, or this miniseries, in 1990. I was 11 years old. It was still terrifying to me. I watched it alone in my bedroom, and I regretted it every night since then. And my parents did too because I kept waking them up in the middle of the night trying to convince them there was a clown in my closet. But I digress. Let's get back to the movie. So, after the funeral, we see Bill in Georgie's bedroom going through a book, through a photo album. And all of a sudden, the picture winks. You know, he goes like this and then blood starts coming out of the book. And this is where we're first clued in that Grown-ups cannot see the supernatural things going on in the film, or I keep calling it a film, it's a miniseries. Anyway, grown-ups can't see what's going on, so I'm assuming they can't see Pennywise either, unless he wants them to. So, the parents come into the bedroom, and they ask why Bill is in there. And there's blood all over the book, and Bill cannot believe that his parents can't see it. So immediately, he has to pretend it's not there. He has to hide it from his parents. And this is one of the things I think is important in, in this film. This film teaches you there's things that you can't trust your parents with. And it kind of makes you feel alone if you're a kid watching this because you know there's certain things that you've done that's happened to you that you just can't tell your parents. You know, that window that suddenly got broken or that dish that fell. You know who actually broke that shit. And this is also where we realize that Pennywise can be anywhere. He's in your head. And in like one of the quotes in the movie, he'll drive you crazy and then he'll kill you. And I think that's what happens, at least to some of his victims. I think if you're not strong enough, he can just overtake you. But this group of kids, the Losers Club, are strong. And that's why he has to wear him down. He can't just attack him. So each kid is getting picked on by the school bully. And the school bully is a, really, is a real psycho. He looks like a guy, like a reject from Greece. He carries a switchblade. He has a really goofy haircut. And he has a couple of bozo lackeys. One of them is named Belch. Who, you guessed it, is constantly burping and belching all over the place. He also dies a very funny death. We'll get to that later. Maybe. So as the story goes on, each kid is confronted by a different version of Pennywise. Like you have one kid, who, he sees a werewolf in the basement. There goes that basement again. You have one kid who is attacked in the shower. It's not really attacked as much as it is funny. Pennywise makes all the shower heads come out and like corner him in the corner of the shower. And then he in a very, very bad, look like stop animation or some kind of really, really primitive CGI. You see him put his hands up through one of the drains and he spreads the drain open and he comes up through the drain. But I think the creepiest one is when Beverly, or Bev as they call her, is in the bathroom. 
And her dad's a real asshole. Let me just cover this part first. Her dad's a drunk. He's also the high school, the elementary school janitor. But her dad's a real ass. He's very abusive to her. He's a drunk. He's always hitting on her and beating her. He's, you can tell he's one of them overly religious people that grew up back during that time. He just, anyway. So she's in the bathroom brushing her hair. She's had a really bad day. You know, her dad slapped her across the room. Mm. So anyway, she's in the bathroom brushing her hair and all of a sudden she hears this voice coming out of the sink. And the voice says something along the lines of, we all float down here. One of the most famous lines from the miniseries. Then all of a sudden a balloon comes out of the sink, out of the, out of, out of the sink drain and it blows up and you just know that thing is going to blow up and blood is going to go everywhere. So what happens? It blows up and blood goes everywhere. And this is the second time that a parent or a grown-up walks in on a scene like this and has no idea what happened. One of my favorite scenes, not to skip too far ahead, but in the second part in the library scene where Richie Tozier is waiting on um, Tim Reeves' library character, I can't remember his name, um, but he's sitting there and of course Pennywise is up to his old tricks. He has balloons floating up in the library and each one of them are popping and blood splurting out of them. Now what's funny is people aren't supposed to be able to see this and I know it's a made for TV series but you see them blink as it blows up in their face and they actually react to it but then they have to remember to not react to it. It's great. It's so you're so bad it's good. Now I haven't mentioned this part. My favorite area of the movie is a place called the Barrens. Now the Barrens, we all had a spot like this as a kid, guys. At my house we had the woods, but it wasn't just woods. It was trees, we had four-wheeler trails, we had big like man-made dirt hills we used to jump our four-wheelers on. And then we had this like, it was like total brush, like total woods, like you couldn't even move without getting, you know, having to cut down some brush to get to it. But me and my ex-best friend, we had made what looked like the house from Friday the 13th, you know, part two where Jason hits the guy in the head with the hammer. We had like a little house built out there like that. Yeah, I was a creepy kid. Anyway, the Barrens is where most of the creepy stuff goes on in the first part of the movie. You had this little area where a big sewer pipe is sitting and it, it's like draining into the, uh, this little pond and over here toward the end of it you have this, which I don't know what this thing is, it looks like a big castle or a uh, fortress. I guess it's some kind of sewer system access point thing and there's like a lake in front of it with like lily pads and, and like brush and stuff. So. Each one of them kind of walks down there and looks across at this thing and you just know that's its lair right there. That big Nightmare on Elm Street house looking thing way, way out there. Yeah, they have to go there. But, but that's my favorite area of the movie. Now everyone in the town is either ignorant to it or they're ignoring it. There was one scene where Beverly's like getting attacked by the bullies and like her neighbor just sees it and just ignores it because they tend to ignore the things going on in the town I guess. Now the gist of the whole film or the whole miniseries is is that they had fought it in the first part of the, of the series and they thought they defeated it. They go down into the sewer through that little that big house thing over there and if you're a kid you're like in your bed pulling the sheets up like this and you're just scared out of your mind and you know watching it now it's like yeah get them this is kick ass but back then you were terrified so they go down there and the bullies follow them down there they actually intend to kill these kids what kind of bullies are these it's ridiculous I mean you don't want their lunch money you want their fucking lives so they go down there and they see uh, one of those little pom poms that Penny wears on his, Pennywise wears on his uh, his costume, 
and they end up in this chamber and there's like this fake Halloween fog machine type smoke blowing up around them and they all join hands so they don't lose contact with each other and Pennywise t tries to tempt all of them with some kind of fake um, image or hallucination you have Beverly seeing her dad you have Bill seeing his brother that he killed you have um, Richie Tozier seeing the Wolfman so at this point Pennywise has grabbed Stan out of the huddle and got him pinned up against the wall Eddie the geeky kid who has the fake asthma breaks out to save his friend's life and one of the biggest quotes of the movie he takes out his asthma inhaler thing sprays Pennywise in the face and said this is battery acid you slime then Beverly being the expert marksman she is with the slingshot shoots Pennywise in the head and in some of the worst and cheesiest but also awesome animation we see Pennywise his head crack open light shining out of his head he does a frontward jump flip thing and lands into the into a sewer drain to where all the kids reach and grab his arm that is extended up as he's slowly moving down the drain and you can see it his hand is slowly changing into this tentacle dinosaur looking thing and that's your first clue right there that Pennywise is not really human if you hadn't already guessed so at this point you know he's not dead he's gonna come back and that's the whole point of the miniseries the whole first part of the film or the miniseries is Tim Reed's character is trying to get everyone to come back to Derry to fight this thing it's been 30 years now everyone made a promise to Bill and I will never forget this thing as long as I live they walked out of the Barrens or that I mean that sewer thing that big castle thing and they're standing there at the lake the little pond and Bill asks everyone if it's not dead they'll come back you know whenever it comes back everyone promises right away except Stan Stan needs to have everyone else promise before he's gonna promise he didn't really want to come back and it's one of the most awesome scenes I've, I can remember as a child like and they all kind of put their arm around each other like they fought the demon they walked away and they're stronger for it now they're all grown up and they're heading back to Derry you got some people driving there you got some flying there you got some taking trains now Richie Tozier who was played by Seth Green as a kid he's all grown up now and he's the one that doesn't really agree with what's going on he doesn't want to fight it I really don't know why he came back because he complains the whole time now you have Richard um, I'm sorry now you have John Ritter's character Ben who is now he has different hair color he's skinny or he's thin and he's probably the only one that doesn't look like his character as a child Ben as a kid had blonde hair his facial structure was completely different all the others I can kind of see how they how they would have looked like you know like that as they got grown but I guess they just wanted to have John Ritter in the film it does it does work it just it doesn't match his childhood actor now they all meet at this Chinese restaurant and they haven't seen each other in 30 years if each one of them come into town they can say they say that they can sense when one of them comes to town you know when one of them enters the city limits and if each one of them comes into the city they're all greeted by Pennywise in some way shape or form you have a balloon pop up in one of the taxi cabs you see Pennywise standing up at the road sign so as they're in the as they're in the restaurant crazy things start to happen at the end the food turns bad you they start opening up fortune cookies and some pretty gross stuff in there you got an eyeball you got look like a, a deformed baby duck or a goose or something you got this little claw thing going like this and of course them being the ones that fought it as children are still the only ones that can see this supernatural stuff going on but basically the gist of the second part is they're all trying to get the courage to go back down into the sewer and fight it one last time what's interesting is the bully that followed him down in the sewer and tried to kill him took the blame for all the murders that were going on so he ended up in a mental institution 
Now Pennywise realizes Henry Bowers, as he's known as in the film, can be a benefit to him. So he goes into the mental institution and appears before him as Belch, the one he killed in the, uh, in the first film. So he gets Henry out of this mental institution, tells him to go back to Derry and finish what he started. So everyone is, as far as the Losers Club, they're really not convinced yet. They're not really convinced until Henry Bowers breaks into their hotel and stabs uh, Tim Reed's character. I still can't remember that guy's name. So this pretty much makes everyone determined to go back down there and finish it off once and for all. In the first film, they used a slingshot with silver earrings. Of course, you know, everyone was following the Hammer Horror films back then, and the Wolfman, of course, could only be killed by silver, so they, they decided to go with silver. Once again, Bev is holding the slingshot, and she has two earrings, and they look ugly as hell. I can't imagine what woman would wear those things. So once they made it back into the, the sewer lair, they see Georgie's boat coming toward them. And it's creepy as hell. Now what's creepy about this is when Bill picks the boat up and turns it around and sits it back on the water, it goes back in the same direction it came, meaning it was going against the current. So this boat is leading them to Pennywise's true lair. Now they get to this little door and I don't understand how Pennywise fits through this door. The human beings can barely fit through there. And when they get in there, they see this big ass spider and that's when everyone's tension and fear just kind of went away because they're like, okay, this is the big finale. It's a big ass spider from space, stop motion looking type thing. And they shoot it with the earrings. They don't really do a whole lot of damage with it. Um, Eddie gets killed, which I never understood how he dies. I guess it, I guess the spider, when it picked him up, it crushed him and threw him back down. Never really understood it, but apparently he died right there. So as everyone else is being mesmerized by the spider's lights coming out from under his chest, Bev finally makes it to, to get the, the one earring that she has left. She had missed the first time, so she had to go find the earring. So when she finds the earring, she shoots it at it and it goes up into his, his chest where his lights are coming out and just, it blows up. You see all kinds of explosions and then, but they're not done. They don't want to come back when they're 70 years old. They want to resolve this shit right here and now. So they get their BMF walks on, that is bad motherfucker walks on, and they follow it to where it's trying to escape to and they, they beat it down, they whoop its ass, and I'm assuming that they're all reaching in through those vents and those holes where the light's coming out, and they pull the heart out, and what's looked like a, a Legend of Zelda throwback, they hold the heart up in the air like they have found the Ark of the Covenant or something, and they hold it up like this, and you see the lights go out. Now this whole time, I've forgotten to mention this, but Bill's wife has come to Derry to look for him, and she was up in a cocoon in its lair. Why it didn't kill her, I don't know. But when it dies, you see all this like webbing and cocoon stuff start coming down from the ceiling. And of course, of course Audra is like traumatized now. That's Bill's wife. So Bill decides to take Audra on a trip through Derry on his bicycle. This is the same bicycle that saved him and Stan's life when he was a kid. And I guess he thinks he has some kind of magic properties. So the faster Bill goes on the bike, the faster he pedals, the more Audra starts to wake up. So as he's going down a hill, and I don't know how he didn't wreck this bike, because he's actually doing this on a street. There's no way he faked this. So they're riding the bike like down a hill or whatever, and she wakes up and she's like, hey, what's going on? Where am I? And you see Bill like stop in the middle of the road and turn sideways and like traffic is stopped all around him and he's like thank god you're alive yada, 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 and the camera pans out and then that's how the film ends you have a little um, a little uh, ending dialogue voiceover type thing saying what happened to the uh, people in the film you know I think Ben and Ben and Beverly got married Richie became an even more famous comedian and then 
deal and Oliver lived happily ever after. There was never a sequel to this film. It didn't need one. It was scary on its own. Pennywise the Dancing Clown was the perfect balance between a funny, lovable horror character, if there is such a thing, and actually genuinely scary. He wasn't like Freddy Krueger, who after the first film turned into a comedian, to where you just sat back and just waited for the entertaining kills. Every, in, there actually wasn't that many deaths in the film. It was actually scary. It wasn't gory. It wasn't bloody, really. It was just genuinely scary. It was the film that terrified us as children. Watching it now is like being injected with a needle of nostalgia. All those memories of being a kid just come flooding back. And I remember how I felt when I first watched it. It was terrifying then and it was just now it's just part of my childhood. And one of my favorite things about this film is kids today don't act like this anymore. No, I don't mean they go out and fight demons. I'm talking about going out to the creek and building little dams like they did at the Barrens in the film, riding bicycles, you know, just being kids. I remember as a kid riding my bike down the street and there was always that one house or one or two houses that you knew your friends were gonna be at. You know, you had four or five friends, so you had four or five houses on the street that they could possibly be at. Of course, you're driving, you know, you're riding your bike down the road and you see four or five bicycles that belong to your friends kind of laying to the one side in the front yard. So you turn in there and you go knock on the door and you go, hey, Mrs. Smith, is so-and-so available to play? Those were the best memories. And this film reminds me of that. You have kids riding bicycles, going over to see each other, hanging out during the summer, and just having a ball. Yeah, the film's a horror movie, but they had a lot of fun. Look at the movie scene, where they're all just hanging out, watching a, a movie on the big screen, just relaxing. Anyway, guys, that's my memories of the film, and my little review. There is a new film coming out, an actual movie, and I'm gonna plug the trailer for both the, the original and the remake at the end of this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this shirt tail video. Once again, this is my Stephen King's It Pennywise t-shirt. It says, aren't you gonna say hello? And the one thing about this shirt, I don't remember him ever saying that in the film. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should go watch it again. You guys have a great one. Peace and say my name. We'll see you next time. Why are you guys anyway? We're sort of a club. Yeah, the losers club. You want in? Yeah, I do. Hey, we're seven now. Lucky seven. Kill it. I just want to forget about it. It's not just us. It's all the other kids, too. Who's going to be next? It kills kids, damn it. You killed my brother George, you bastard. Let's see you now. Maybe it's the water. The water? Maybe it's the sewer. Hi, Georgie. <laughs> Was it Pennywise? Big white guy, red nose. About 75 feet tall, mouth full of razor sharp teeth. Smell that? That's death. Losers fight it. Losers die. They all flow.
There you go. She's all ready, Captain. Thanks, Billy. It's not like any town I've ever been in before. People die or disappear six times the national average. And that's just grown-ups. Kids are worse. Way, way worse. We all float down here. I saw something. There was this... A clown. I saw him too. Look, it's all connected by the sewers. That's where it lives. <laughs> what happened? You'll float too. You'll float too. You'll float too. You'll float too. You'll float too.